And then their response is to go on strike and drive up to the state parliament with placards. And what happened on that day? Uber sign-ups went up by 80%. Are they friggin' kidding me? Welcome to the Ask Alisa podcast, where we answer all your questions about business, marketing, and technology. Welcome to Ask Alika episode number six. I'm really pumped today because we have Charlie Gunningham with us. I'm going to do a quick intro on Charlie and then I'm going to let Charlie fill in the gaps. So, Charlie grew up in the UK, west of England, did an economics degree, was a teacher north of London, went to Singapore in 1989, taught there for eight years, met his wife, married, moved to (laughs) Perth, 97, did an MBA while teaching at Howell School, then set up AussieHome.com, Australia's first map-based real estate website. And during this time, Charlie also had two kids. In 2010, Charlie sold AussieHome.com to Raywa. He then ran Raywa. Rewa. Com. Rewa. I'm so I know it's spelt Rewa, but apparently they pronounce it Rewa. 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 Yeah. 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 So sorry. Just up the road here, actually. The yes, yeah. they're very close to yeah. us. Very Subi. close. 2013, he moved to Business News as the general manager of Digital, then became the CEO in 2015. In 2017, Charlie left Business News to establish Damburst, a digital disruption transformation strategy consulting business. Correct me if I'm... It's perfect. I'm Beautiful. Good. You do that very well. <laughs> Along the way, Charlie has drummed in a rock and roll show band in Singapore, played representative cricket for the Singapore national team. He now plays golf as his cricketing days are behind him. Charlie can also travel through time, heal the sick, and shoot rainbows from his fingers. Oh, <laughs> wow. Thanks, so. What can't you do, oh, Charlie? You Please much. tell Just us. I love the intro, but I did write it. So you read it very well, though. Shh. No, no, you didn't. All the secrets. Uh, no, you didn't. Um, so uh, I have a question, Charlie. Sir. I have a question. So, so well, actually, fill, fill in to f- free, feel free to fill in the gaps. Sure. Did I miss anything? Uh, no, you did very well. I enjoyed drumming in a rock band. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, I went, I'd just been a few weeks in Singapore. So I was teaching in a big expat school there. Okay. And I was mucking around on a drum kit. And then the next, uh, in the, in the music studio. And then the next morning, someone comes up to me and taps me on the shoulder. Says, I hear you're a drummer. I said, I'm really not. No, no, someone heard you. I said, well, you then you know I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> said, we have this band. It's like a staff band, but it's been going for like 10 yeah. years. It's got quite a following called wow. Rough and Ready. And oh. uh, we play rock and roll music. And he said, yeah, and I'd heard of Rough and Ready. I've been oh. there now a few weeks by then. And they said, oh, we need a drummer because the drummer is leaving at the end of term. They were all teachers in the same school. So I somehow completely winged a uh, re- rehearsal with them. Well, you were a drummer, though. I know. <laughs> but I always used to sort of just play with um, pencils, you know? Right. Like you obviously yeah. have very good so natural I went rhythm. And I winged it, but I could sing a little bit, right? There you go. And I could hold a tune. <laughs> Not like you guys. You're awesome. But I can sort of hold a tune. <laughs> Don't ask me to, though. And got through. And then I had to have drum lessons because I had like six weeks to the first gig. And I had to wow. learn about 120 songs. Wow. Uh, yeah. So it got serious. So you can do anything. If I can do that. I mean, I'm, e- I'm an t- economics teacher from England running a – Dot com, the other side of the world. What on earth was I doing 20 years ago wow. sitting up Aussie Home? I mean, if that isn't like an inspiration for anyone can do anything, you know, look what you guys done with Alika. Mm. You know, it's putting yourself old. out there. It's fantastic. So I'll see what happens to Dan Burst. You know, that's my new little gig. I've been doing it yeah. five weeks and it's just me. My commute is up the stairs. It's about 12 steps to my office yeah. and it's pretty free most days. And nice. I'm loving Not it. Not too much traffic. No. Nah. Awesome. That's good. And, and I want to get to Dan Burst. I want to hear all about it. Um, yep. First off, I want to know, because I've done, we've known each other for a while. I've done a lot of research before this podcast. How, how are you not the most arrogant man in the world? Oh, what happened? Shut up. What happened? Oh, really? <laughs> I'm making him blush. He's blushing. <laughs> he is. But seriously. You, like, Next you, question. You know, what do you mean? No, but like, about? okay, I'm interested because were you, it, was it your parents? Did you get, were you disciplined? You know, because mm, I, I met a lot of business people and, you know, I, I struggle with ego. Mm. And I meet a lot of business people. It's, it's, a lot of them are not nice. What advice mm. would you give to people that maybe do end up with that yeah, kind of ego? And, and how was, did you? You know, probably mum and dad. They passed away now, but they, you know, I'm the youngest of three brothers, and my two older brothers are born in Africa, and I was born uh, when they got back to England, and um, so I'm ten years younger than my two older brothers. And um, mum and dad were, were awesome. There was always lots of parties going on at our place. Like dad was a country lawyer. And I remember a few years ago, um, 20 years ago now, I was back in England from Singapore and dad had an operation. And the number of people who came around our house 
right? There's a farmer came around with two pheasants and said, anything I can do to help, you know, John's been fantastic to me. And I realized, I didn't probably realize when I was a kid, all these people milling through our house, like with dad's clients and people he'd helped through divorces or through issues in their life as the country lawyer, because you do everything with the country lawyer, yeah. right? You do all the property transactions, you do all the settlements, you helping out farmers with title deeds or whatever you're doing or issues. And he was one of the most loveliest helping people type people. And when he then was ill, he got better from it, but when he was ill, the number of people who just came through our house because they wanted to say, can I help? I thought it was really lovely. Yeah. And mum too, mum was absolutely delightful. She would help um, down the local old folks' home cooking meals. She'd go and read to uh, blind people in hospital, you know, just read mm. to them for an hour. You know, she's yeah, fantastic. Well, so, uh, yeah. yeah, probably probably got it for my mum and dad. I hope I did anyway. Yeah, so parents. Definitely sounds like it. Yeah. They sound yeah. like great people. Oh, that's mm. awesome. So, so being around a lot of people when you were young, obviously having yeah. a fairly big family. But you know what I've also found? It's 20 years I've been in uh, Perth now, and through the MBA program and through Business News, I've met a lot of really top CEOs and board people. And the higher up you go, it's just something nice to say about human nature, the people are really, really good. They're like good, honest, honorable people at the top. They don't show off. The people who show off are some of the people who are stuck in the middle, and they always have to just say how great they are, you know? And you yeah. go, oh, really? You know, look what you're yeah. doing. And you, you meet them, and I've been very fortunate to meet, you know, the Michael Cheneys and Tracy Horton and Tony Howarth and Diane Smith Gander and you know, all these sort of people. And they are just really fantastic people. Sue Murphy from the Water Corp, you know, it's just fantastic yeah. people. They're like, they're great. Yeah. And it does you a lot of good to think how honorable these people are. And that if you behave like that, you do go to the top. You don't have to be graspy and greedy and, you know, backstabbing and all hyper competitive and stuff like that. Yeah. And they're probably not the insecure ones. They've made it. They're secure in themselves. And, mm. you know, they've got nothing to prove. Really? And one of the nicest things I had at Business News, something called the CEO lunch, which I'm glad Mark continues. Mm. I could take out my favorite business people for lunch and really get to know what makes them tick. And, uh, you know, like Michael Cheney, he told me about how he failed all his exams in year two at uni because <laughs> he got distracted. We've all by, been there. He got distracted <laughs> with by uni. a lady who became his wife. <laughs> oh, oh. And so he did no work. <laughs> well, but I had a happy ending, though. At the end of, yes, at the end of that first year, uh, at the Undercroft at UWA, you had to turn, in those days, so we're talking the 60s, I think, you had to turn up and see if your name was printed on a piece of paper because these are the people who passed. And if your names weren't on the piece of paper, you'd failed, right? So he looked and he didn't see his name on any of the units Whoops. he's done. And he walks over the road and his dad, who's a federal minister at the moment, so Fred Ch at, at the time, Fred Cheney, right, in like the Menzies government, rings him up on a payphone and says, how'd you do, son? He goes, oh, I failed them all. <laughs> what do you think his dad said? His dad, who's a federal minister, said, ah, oh, those uni students, those uni teachers, they know nothing. <laughs> Which well, don't worry about it. it. <laughs> but he was so shamed. He worked oh. really hard from then on. Wow. <laughs> I, I would have gotten, gotten beaten. Clever <laughs> reverse psychology. <laughs> wow. Which, which leads me to <laughs> my next question. Uh, Sorry, Mike, I'll tell you a story. But he did tell me that and I put it in the paper. So, <laughs> Oh, that's great. And, and we don't have to stick to these, by the way. Yeah. Um, education, how important do you think it is? Because I didn't have a great time in my education. I don't think I particularly have a super high IQ. I think I'm really good business-wise, street smart, all that stuff. But in terms of pure academics, unlike you two, you two smarty pants, uh, you know, I didn't really have that and I didn't really do too well in uni. So can you enlighten us, Charlie, on your thoughts? Would you like to tell us about it, Zion? <laughs> no, it's about you, Charlie. <laughs> Only you. I No, I was a very average student. I didn't fail much. I passed a lot. Um, O-levels is what you did when you were 15, 16, and I got 14 of them, which is a ridiculous amount, um, but nearly all C grades. So I was pretty much jack of all trades, master of none. I didn't top anything until I actually got to my MBA. And I was amazed. I really got into the MBA. I, was a, I went in as a school teacher and I came out setting up Aussie Home by meeting a guy on the MBA. But during the MBA, and it was the first time I was here, so I came to sort of do the MBA, take a bit of pause on my teaching career, I really got into it. And I really mm. found these organizational behavior and leadership, um, the HR, the marketing, the, all these sort of different strategic uh, subjects you're doing. I loved it at UWA. I wow. loved it. And I topped the whole business school. And it was really that when I got 
when I finished, I got this letter saying I topped the business school and I was back teaching, that I knew I had to go and use this. I had to go and do something else, but I didn't know what. Yeah. And that's what led me to Aussie Home. But your real, real answer is importance of education, absolutely. I'm a huge, big, passionate you know, believer in the, um, in the power of education, the power of learning, mm. and how important it is at primary school and even early education, even before that. So I've got now teenage kids, but when they went through the primary school, I got myself on the board. We uh, became an independent public school, which half the schools in mm -hmm. the state are, or in Perth CBD are. It's one of the best things the Barnet d government did actually is to is to bring in IPS, and the other states are looking at it because it allows the the schools in maybe the better areas to take control of their school and it allows the, the government then to control, to, to have a look at the schools maybe in the lower demographic areas where they can therefore put their resources, right? And the other schools can, can appoint their own teachers, can even appoint a head teacher as we did. And we did a rebranding of the school. We changed the logo. We took control of a lot of the resources. Uh, we worked with the PNC and the whole school was lifted. You could just see it, especially the new headmaster we got in. It was amazing. Wow. So I'm a big, passionate believer in the power of learning. I lecture also on the MBA program from time to time. I have done in Singapore, Jakarta, here, and uh, Shanghai. Wow. When the UWA ran its programs offshore, I think they've closed them down now. But um, And I spend a lot of time, as my kids will know, <laughs> incessantly asking them about their school. <laughs> I think it's one of the best things you can do as a dad, actually. You've got kids? Yeah, yeah I do three. Yeah. Yeah. How old? Seven, four, and three. Yeah. yeah. Someone said to me, when they come back, don't just say, how's school? Because they go, yeah. especially when <laughs> they're <laughs> 13. Say that yeah. Got any homework? Yeah. yeah. Right, and then drudge off. Say, what did you learn today? Uh, Great question Tell me what you learned ask. today. Okay. What did you learn? Like, like you want to find I never out. Done, I've never done that. There you go. Yeah. I've said the good, bad, or funny. What, what good, bad, or funny thing happened? And what usually... did you learn today that you didn't know right. yesterday? You were there for eight hours. Tell <laughs> Please me something. tell me something. And you know what? <laughs> when they were going through primary school, we did it every day. We sit down to dinner every night as a family. Really? Do not sit in front of the TV. We mm -hmm. sit all the mobile phones away. Yep. Sit down. We have a chat. And it's, once they got used to it, they were putting their hands up like they were at school because they wanted to interject <laughs> and say the next thing. But what yeah. that signals is to the kids – how the, how, the te how the parents are going to be involved in their education. Because yeah. I have a theory about education. By the way, do interject and shut me up, otherwise I'll carry No, no, forever. I love it. How no, long do you want this podcast to go? So, However long as, as you, you know, um, you're passionate. <laughs> education's a triangle. You've got the school, you've got the student, and you've got the home life. And yeah. the three have to work together. All right? That's why I'm also a big fan of Sector Software, which is mm -hmm. amazing, which is a WA um, tech business run by... Sharon and Grant Grosser, ex-teachers. Ex, ex I've been going 10 years, doing really well. And the school I go to has so sector software. So I, I know, actually, their results. Mm -hmm. I know everything about what's going on at school. Wow. Um, they love that. <laughs> but I can ask them about it. How would you go in that yeah. geography test, Andrew? <laughs> wow. Wow. What are you learning what, in history? What, I know. I can see it all. I can see what they're what, learning in history. What are your thoughts? Because it's funny because when I – when I went to school, I didn't do too well. Even when I tried ha hard, I did okay, right? But when it's only in adulthood, I, I realized that you could learn other ways like YouTube. I learned so much from you. I learned to beatbox from YouTube. I learned how to mm -hmm. sing from YouTube. Like I learned a lot of things um, and business tips and things like that. They're all mm -hmm. on YouTube. What are your thoughts on the on the alternative, non, way. the alternative ways of, of learning as well? Are you big yeah, on that? Or? Of course. And, and school is a 19th century Construct. So I've got a lot of issues about school, actually. What I've I liked heard, yeah. about um, Woodlands Primary School, shout out for Woodlands, where, where I live, mm -hmm. is the, the headmaster there um, that we got in had been a former director of schools, and he knew that schools aren't about education. It's about teaching and learning. Yeah. And 80% of what kids learn is from other kids. Yeah. But 80% of it is wrong. So the skill is to teach the students – to teach the students. Yeah. So he sat them down around in groups of four, very little chalk and talk, very little teacher directed. It's all what's happening around the table with the four. Yeah. He actually looped the year groups, which was very controversial because it meant that typically you'd have year fives and sixes together, years threes and fours together, split years. Mm. A lot of te a lot of parents didn't like that, and I used to have lots of running battles and we'd have lots of explanation because the playground mafia did not like the fact 
that you were splitting the year, year groups together, fives and sixes together, threes and fours together. Actually, it's the best education. I saw this. I saw my my wow. kids go through this, and their confidence grew because they're teaching the other kids across the table because wow. they're a year older. And then the other kids are learning from the other kids, and something fantastic happens. Rather than sitting them down in rows, <laughs> right, <laughs> from age five to what seventeen. And bidding the creativity out of and them. And tell them they're not to talk. Which is a 19th <laughs> yeah. century construct. It worked yeah. back right? then, but it doesn't necessarily work now. It's, a, it's, a, um, it's, it's something that came up after the first industrial revolution. Yeah. Right? And we're still doing it 150 years later. We've got to change the way they're yeah. educating our kids and, and getting this teaching and learning going. So, you know, I'm a big, big believer in that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a really worried about the fact that, that schools now are one long university entrance exam from about age five up to oh, yeah. 17, and that's wrong because we don't know what jobs are going to be around in five years' time. That's right. Let alone 20 years' time. Yeah. yeah. So really what we should be teaching is, you know, creativity, showing initiative, work in teams, work on your own, you know, those sort of skills we should be teaching. Obviously, can you handle technology? Can you speak? Can you persuade? These are the skills we should be teaching, yeah. not just boring didactic subjects. Yeah. Yeah. Pure, purely academic. Yeah. EQ, I think, is a big, EQ, yeah. big missing piece of that. Emotional intelligence, absolutely yeah. right. Character skills. Absolutely well. right. Yeah. 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 Well, um, it'd be great to <coughs> – I, I love your thoughts on education, Charlie. It's mm. so interesting. We could go into so much more depth mm -hmm. on that, but we will push forward. Um, you mentioned – you mentioned, I've heard you say previously, that it took nearly five years to be mm. profitable with Aussie Homes. So can you talk yeah. to us a little bit about the staying power that you have to have to make that happen. Yes, indeed. So we, Nick and I, I mean, Nick came here, he was a hedge fund trader from Zurich, right? Run his own hedge fund. He was 10 years old and we met on the MBA. I was a school teacher from England. Two unlikely people to be running a real estate online venture in Perth. He was here because his wife was originally from here. So he was moving back. Um, and I was here because I'd always wanted to come to Australia since I was a backpacking teenager, come to Australia in the 80s. And my oldest brother, country lawyer like my dad, is in Brisbane, and he's still there now, now retired. So there we were, not knowing what we were doing. But the one advantage we had was, 99, if you had a dot-com idea and an MBA and a pulse, people threw money at you. <laughs> so we raised money from three or four MBA professors. We couldn't believe it. They were writing us checks. These wow. are people we looked up to and well. went to with advice. Oh, you'll need some money here. They were investing in the company. And then some high net worth individuals and family, friends and fools, and we raised $200,000. So we had a runway. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as we got out there, though, most of that money had gone, <laughs> spent on technology. The maps are expensive. <laughs> yeah. And that's when say, you started marketing. <laughs> seven years before Google Maps, which was really hard. Oh, wow. Right? Trying to do real estate on maps on the internet. Wow. Dial up modems and, yeah. you know, didn't even have flat screens in those days. Yeah, we had boxes, yeah. right? Wow. And then we raise some more money, and then the dot com crash, and then don't let anyone tell you that what happens in you know the Nasdaq doesn't affect us immediately. Mm -hmm. Immediately, we could see the round of funding we were in was going to be over pretty quickly. We weren't yeah. going to raise another bean, and we didn't actually raise any more money for seven years. Wow. I think it was then. You're right, Beth. That that's when our business started because we really worked out we're going to make this baby work, and. Year 2000, 2001 was really hard. Mm -hmm. Took us 18 months to get cash flow positive. There were a lot of times where I thought, I don't know how we're going to actually see the month out, let alone the year out. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how we're going to make payroll. Yeah. And I'd say to my staff, I'm not sure how I'm going to make payroll. <laughs> if you don't want to stay, I totally understand. <laughs> Honesty. <laughs> but please stay. <laughs> Just don't go to the fair so work. So honesty commission. is a good policy when you. And they you're, stayed. Oh, that's. Was like, thank you for staying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But that says a lot about the people you surround we'll yourself to you with. When we can, <laughs> <laughs> we did. I promise. I owe you. We did. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it took us probably eighteen months to get cash flow positive. That, that's pretty typical for a new business. But yeah. we were yeah. disrupting a very traditional industry where the real estate agents back then, nine nine two thousand, were putting their marketing money in a wheelbarrow and wheeling it to the weekend papers. You had to wait for Saturday to see where the properties. You had to go and get the lift out in the West Australian on Saturday or the Sunday times. I, I've been living in Singapore up until coming here. We could get the, the West Australian 10 days late down at Holland Village in Singapore, a sort of expat area, and then I would buy it and I would then go and get the real estate lift out. There was no real internet sites back then. But can you imagine waiting, it's before you were born probably, Zion, waiting 
and you. I'm so waiting kind. until the Saturday lift out to even see what the properties were available yeah. and then going around the home opens. And I had to wait a whole week until that lift out again. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Super efficient. That was the yeah, situation. And Nick and I were going, we <laughs> both bought a property here better. and we both thought this is ridiculous. Maybe because we were not from here, we saw it with fresh eyes. Yeah. And then we went out. And there were times where I didn't even know if we'd survive. But I thought, well, worst case scenario, I'll go back to teaching. At least I'd given this crazy dot com thing a go. There you go. But there was always enough light at the end of the tunnel that we just kept going. I thought, oh, we're so close. You know, we started doing websites for people, mm. doing websites for real estate agents. We did print, would you believe? That was not in our original plan at all. We did a, <laughs> news, uh, a magazine called The Life which was basically real estate listings in magazine form, and then the agents could keep it out wow. at home opens. But we had all their listings, so we could basically just plop it into InDesign and just lay it out and get it printed, and then they'd give it out at home opens. Mm -hmm. right. But the lessons from all this is <clears throat> I tell, I go and talk at startup functions, and I say, you've got to understand what problem you're solving. And I say, okay, so we were a real estate website, right? What problem were we solving? And there's a silence, and someone puts a hand up, and I go, yeah. Oh, we were making it better for people to buy properties. No, that wasn't the problem we were solving. Making it easier for real estate agents. Real estate agents are our clients. Yeah. yeah. Well They're the ones paying Gold you. star. <laughs> yeah. They're the ones Don't. paying us. So you've got to solve the problems of your customer. Yeah. The real estate mm. searchers were our users, but they weren't paying us any money. They weren't our customer. Yeah. It took us 18 months post-launch to figure that out. I would say that all startups need to figure that out before they start, unlike me. So when they come and see me, I always want to know what problem are they solving. And if you lock onto that problem and fall in love with your customer problems, not your product. I've got a lovely app. <laughs> it's fantastic. Look, Don't there's get me all started. these things. Don't it's get really me pretty. Look at this. Don't Look at what it started. does. We okay. get people all the what time. What problem is it solving? Tell me that. What big, hairy, global problem that you have to scratch because it's itching you? Yeah. And you know that. Millions others have that problem. There could be a business in there. Because only if you're solving a problem are you creating value. Only if you're creating value will people pay. Only if people pay have you got a business. Mm. It's fairly straightforward. And you have, you've said in the past, it's easy to buy things. Hard Much to sell, easier. Hard to sell things. So we raised money and we started buying things. Hey, we're in business. We've got an office. We've got a logo. We've got people. We've got a website. We've got brochures. Fancy. Hey. Got a credit card with AussieHome.com, private limited on it. I'm in business. How easy is this? You're not in business till you're actually solving someone's problem and they're paying you to have it solved. And it was actually the, probably the best thing we did in those early days is we listened to our customers. We got them into our offices and we got red wine on a desk much like this and give them chips and dips and said, tell us all your problems. And they unloaded because they it's a tough job being a real estate agent, actually. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to yeah. do it. So yeah. those focus groups were really key in helping you guys yeah. understand yeah. what you're actually and then doing. Latching onto it. And then I real yeah. then the light came on. But it, as I say, it took eighteen months. The light came on. Real estate is not about selling properties. Do you want to know what list real estate is actually about? Real estate agents don't sell properties. <gasps> Shock horror, you heard it here. Enlighten us. Us. What, what do they sell? Enlighten us. They get listings. They sell themselves to get the listings. Yeah. Because a good listing, right? It's a zero-sum game. I list your property. He can't list your property. He can't list your property. She can't list your property. I've got your property. Exclusively listed me. As long as I price and present it correctly, it will sell within 30 days. And then I'll get the commission. Often the market is beyond your control. You can't influence the market. So the market's really, really terrible. It might not sell at all unless you really jack the price down. Don't let them tell you that they've got a fantastic <coughs> secret source to real estate selling. They don't. Sorry, real estate agents. But what they do do, they've got, they, they convince you that they're the person you should list with. And then no one else. And should. then the light came on. Then our business became clear. It's about listing tools. That's why we did the magazine. Because if they were with us, right, they could say, well, you list with me, I'll put you in the Life magazine. Oh, what's the Life magazine? That's this. You list with me, you get on my website, which Aussie Home does. You list with me, you get on AussieHome.com, and then they feed you through to these other websites as well. It's a listing tool. It's about getting the edge over the other real estate agent so you get the listing. That's what it's about. And then does that, correct me if I'm the, on the wrong path, does that create the competitive tension between the real estate agents? Absolutely, and they want to sign up? Because it's a zero-sum game. So they have got to be, for whatever reason, maybe they're good-looking or they've got a good... <laughs> 
patter. They got the good scripts. They got a nice car. They, you know, whatever. They, they, maybe they're number one selling agent in uh, in that suburb, and it's clear they are. They got signs everywhere, right? For whatever reason, they just need to be an inch better than the other guys, and they'll get the listing. And then they've got a hundred percent of that commission. So it ended up being less about referrals. Because I'm guessing if they're all competing against each other, mm-hmm. it was more just this is this gives me an edge. Yeah. Um. So they they will probably weren't necessarily recommending each other <laughs> to all get on Aussie Homes, but eventually but it became to be. you can't stand not to be on it. That's right. So you and that created really that, nice. that, that that need. And I remember cold calling the first week or so, and I won't tell the agent, but he was really nasty. I didn't oh. like cold calling anyway. Oh. He did not make it easy. Oh. And I remember he said, if you carry on talking, I will put the phone down. Email me one paragraph of what your offer is, and I will get back to you if I'm interested. And I went, whoa. Wow. Nine months later, he walks into the office with his listings, like because they're printed out and he's got pictures of them and brochures and goes, I have to be on you. How do I get on you? And put them down on our reception please, desk. Please, Charlie. It'll be double the price for you, mate. <laughs> and name? he was a huge fan and yeah. he was lovely uh, after that. Yeah. But I reminded him a few years <laughs> later. You yeah. know how nasty you were to me? A lot of skepticism at the start. <laughs> uh, but hilarious. by the way, I totally understand. Who are these crazy guys, these non Aussie guys, coming along, putting all their listings on the internet? Is that going to take away the power of yeah. the real estate agent? Are we out to disintermediate them? You know, I can understand their skepticism. Actually, yeah. and it's thre- it's threatening, it's threatening. So yeah, I can understand anything, that. Any change is threatening. Yeah. So that that's awesome. Um, I want to talk about patience because we've been in business ten years, mm. and to be honest, it's only been this year that I, I I don't have to work a sixty, seventy, eighty hour a week. Whereas in the first probably eight to nine years, Bernie and I were just burning the midnight mm. oil, and I'm thankful for that. But it's taken us ten years to get to this point. Well, it's I got its think, own momentum. Yeah, right? it's got its own got momentum. Brand and, That's right. Yeah. The brand, you know, inbound leads coming in. You've got yeah. you've got management. You yeah. know, um, Beth's helping me out. Like, it's it's taken a long time, but I don't think people really understand that. And when people want to start businesses, they're thinking six months, twelve months, or even two years. But it's not enough time. Yeah. And you have the grow rich slowly mantra. Yeah. Can you elaborate? On Absolutely. That? So it's not a get rich quick scheme because all those things don't stick and they don't stay. So the latest fashion trend, the latest fad, the latest whatever music, you know, that just is, it's big on reality because they're, I don't know, the one, the X Factor. Has any of those guys ever had a career? Sorry. Or Australian Idol. Or if they guys have, Sebastian. it's taken them seven guys years. Is that it? <laughs> one of them, yeah. But it took them seven years to be relevant again. Well, those guys after... are survivor. Will we even know who they are in about a month's time? Yeah. I mean, the person who won last year, Christy, where is she now? What? She, I mean... <laughs> Is that why did Clearly she win? watch. But anyway, my <laughs> family love it, Survivor. <laughs> the best things grow slowly because they're the ones yeah. where you can build them up and they have their own momentum. So it's not like you're building it on sand quickly and it gets fallen over. You know, the latest flash in the pan, that doesn't last, right? Mm. And the thing about the things that grow slowly is you can sort of ignore them. If you're the incumbent to making a lot of money, you don't know what's eating away at you. That's what the internet did to print. That's what, you know, Uber, like, oh, it came from nowhere. Well, the taxi industry could have seen Uber five years before it came in. It, it launched in about 70 yeah. cities before it came here. Yeah. You know, and then their response is to go on strike and drive up to the state parliament with placards. And what happened on that day? Uber signups went up by 80%. Yeah. Are they but, friggin' kidding me? They used it. As a marketing tactic, Sorry. Yeah. I'm not academic. I love the taxi industry and all that, but really, come on. It's true. You, yeah. you're like, it, it happened because the user experience wasn't good and someone came along with a better user experience. And that trumps everything. Yeah. And that's Sorry a- to, to mention Trump. <laughs> but it does. Speaking of user experience. Uh, and, that's and that's another thing, thing you said. You said change. change. Actually, actually happening slowly. slowly. Mm. People, People think, oh, change is happening so fast. Overnight, overnight this will happen, happen and then and bang, they It gone. seems like it does. But all the great, you know, superstars who suddenly break through, Ed Sheeran and others, have actually been learning their craft for a long time. And they're the ones yeah. that stick and stay, Adele, right? They've been singing for a long time, yeah. Lady Gaga, a lot yeah. of performance mm. led up to that. You might have suddenly, you're hearing her everywhere and you didn't hear her at all. 10 minutes ago, but I, I think actually there's an awful lot of effort. Yeah. So hats off to you, 10 years old. Yeah, I remember thanks, when we were yeah. 10 years old, we had a party and we went, <laughs> we're 10 years old, an online business, 
You know, it's like dog years. That's like 70 years in real company. In, in, right? That's how old I actually am now. A 10 year old dot com. How many of those are around? I know. I know. It, we, know? Yeah. It feels weird. Like, I'm used to being the young guy on the block and, you know, and I've still, I think I've got a youngish face. But so, what lesson does that tell you? Don't get too complacent. Com- comfortable. Always no. be looking for the next thing. Who's going to be jabbering up at you trying to be the yeah. next Alika and take it away from you? You know, yeah. that can't get too. Oh, totally. You've got to stay hungry. If, if, if we ever feel comfortable, we. We, we get a bit antsy. We know something's wrong. Yeah. And in the past, whenever something's, whenever we've been comfortable, things have gone wrong. Yeah. So, no, I, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Look how comfortable the newspapers were. They were in yeah. their big fat monopoly for 50, 60 years mm-hmm. when the internet came along and it basically pulled the rug from underneath them. So, and that will do that if someone comes along with a better customer experience. So, you've always got to be looking at what you're doing. All the touch points of the customer, how can we make that better and better and better. So there's no real reason for people to go yeah. away. Yeah, which brings us to digital disruption. Mm. Charlie, My favorite this is subject. your thing. This has been your thing for <laughs> decades, I think. It's not, now just officially just, your thing. Yeah. Right. My thing. <laughs> <laughs> Tell go, us your thoughts. Go crazy. Well, I mean, the, look, look at the experience I had. So uh, if an economics teacher in a crazy um, – guy from Zurich uh, can basically cobble together a website and take on the all-conquering print media. And we weren't the only ones doing it. There were other people doing it. And there were also national players. Uh, Look at realestate.com. I mean, Mm -hmm. I remember them post.com boom and crash. They'd list on the stock market. They'd raised $8 million. They basically Mm -hmm. were flaming out into 2000. They'd had three CEOs in four years. Most of the newspapers were writing. I remember reading them very gushing uh, emails pouring scorn around these dot-coms, how it was all a big con, how the internet was going to make money, how all these businesses were completely useless. And look, 89% of them probably were. They had no business model. And I remember reading these stories saying how realist.com was going to be the next one. Well, it's now worth $9 billion. I remember when it was worth $6 million. Wow. Um, and, and that is incredible. I mean, over you couldn't say on which day it happened. You know, was it? October the 13th, 2007, you know, it wasn't because it was an inexorable shift from about 2000 from when they were writing those, writing those gloating emails about how the internet was a waste of time and we weren't going to have any more of these stupid e businesses anymore. These are the newspapers gloating about the dot-com crashes, right, to now look at them. There's no Just more newspapers. look at the share price of Seven West Media. Look at their latest results. You know, Tens getting bought out. So it's... there's digital disruption, right? Yeah. Boom. And then you wait till Amazon gets here. Over in the oh, US, been talking about that. Amazon does 50 cents of every dollar sold online goes through Amazon. It's enormous. You wait till they come here. Um, you know, that was the reason probably Officeworks IPO was shelved a few months ago. Wow. But uh, West Farmers were going to spin out Officeworks. Mm. Um, they're clearly going to be attacked by Amazon. Um, and they're going to have to think very clearly. You know, the incoming CEO, I saw him speak the other day, an amazing guy, Rob Scott, an, uh, an Olympic rowing athlete, silver medalist. You know, Another perfect great man. guy. Great guy, yeah. <laughs> um, and he's taking over West Farmers and all power to him. And he's the biggest private employer in Australia, you know, a huge company and a great story in itself. But they're going to have to really watch out that they don't get disrupted by Amazon. It's going to take on Coles. It's going to take on yeah. Bunnings. It's going to take on all yeah. their major big retail stores. And people have been writing about this for a while. Mm. They know it's coming. And Jerry Harvey as well over at Harvey Norman is going to think about it. But retail's on its knees. You, you, you've yeah. seen it around here in Subiaco. Mm. It's tough. Oh. Now start adding Amazon and its customer experience into, the, into it, right? Double yeah, they're, they're a beast. We did a podcast, and I'd like to hear your thoughts. We did a podcast on this, I think episode one or two, on Amazon coming to Australia because it was supposed mm. to be this month, but they keep uh-huh. pushing it out because yeah. they need, I think that's trying to set up the they're warehouse. telling you when we're coming. I, re- I know, they're not. <laughs> Surprise, we're here, Coles. Um, I think it'll be next year. <laughs> right. And we did a podcast on what can businesses do to prepare for this mm-hmm. and getting really practical to the local uh, to the local business here, like e-commerce businesses, for example. What can they do to prepare mm. for Amazon? Yeah, so... I think it's going to be the same answer for every industry. What's going to happen in education? We spoke about that at the top of the show. What's going to happen at universities? There's an old-fashioned model. Mm-hmm. We've seen what disruption's done in hotel industry accommodation. We've seen what it's done in taxis. We've seen what it's done in advertising and media. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we're seeing what it's doing in TV. You're just going onto YouTube. You, my kid's just on YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram. Boom. That's it. No Hardly any free to air TV. They will never open a magazine or a newspaper in their lives. They don't listen to the radio. So that's it. Bang, bang, bang. Right? A little bit of SoundCloud for some music. Mm. Wow. That's a whole generation growing up completely different how you and I grew up. Mm. Real estate, now there's a market for disruption, right? Mm. It's an incredibly inefficient, fragmented market. Are you telling me that someone's not going to come along with a piece of tech sometime in the near future? It's going to disrupt that one? Mm. So think of any industry. Think of government. Oh, my God. How inefficient is government? You think someone's going to come along and disrupt that? It's all for the taking. Love that. As someone We're that used to work for the government. <laughs> We're just at yeah, the beginning. Yeah, we just had to start. That's what uh, Jack Ma said the other day, right? Yeah. From, um, from Alibaba. We are just at the beginning of this yeah. digital disruption. Yeah. Yeah. And my daughter says to me, she's 15, bless you, and she goes, but I don't know what I want to do, Dad. I said, don't worry. You don't because need to know. What are you going to be doing By in the five, time, ten years' yeah. time? Yeah. It'll it hasn't be different. been invented yet. Yeah. yeah. And she goes, well, that doesn't help. I said, <laughs> so. Stop stressing. It means no stress. Yeah. You're wonderful. You play sport. That teaches you so much about Character leadership and, and success and failure and disappointment and yeah. success and yeah. teamwork and relying on people and leadership and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, you work hard at school and you've got to be independent at work. You've got to think about problems. You've got to solve them. And yeah. you know, these are the things that people are going to be buying in the future. Well, that's. So you don't grow up to be a lawyer. Or a, oh, Love it. Lawyer, accounting. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, that's, it's that's really interesting. Right? The AI side of things is that a lot of these traditional, you know, careers that people got into won't exist anymore. Yeah. yeah. So that's exactly it. And that's where the creativity and the, the, the human spirit comes into it, where you, that's going to be. I saw a great quote yesterday. Your perfect, yeah. Trade Mark quality. Shelton from Bloom Lab is a great uh, yes. quote. I saw him talk at uh, Uni Club uh, breakfast yesterday, a Fogarty mm-hmm. series um, breakfast, and he said, "For every one robot, it displaces six jobs. But for every one tech job, five tech jobs are created." So it's not all doom and gloom, no. right? You just the stuff look that's in the right coming: place. robots, AI, machine learning. Hopefully, we'll do less menial, boring work. Right? Like we were doing 100 years ago, 200 years ago, those jobs have gone. Or even some jobs we were doing 10, 20, 30 years ago. Mm. And we're going to hopefully doing the sort of higher end of the pyramid yeah. intelligent jobs, That's having right. more time. Right? But I can't wait for the autonomous car. I just want to go out. I can't my wait car to not have to app. park. I don't care about parking. I don't care about drinking too much. Yep. Right? I can just go. Boom, my car, here it is, my Google car, <laughs> or is it an Apple car, or is it a Tesla car? You know, mm-hmm. What I think is going to be interesting is, are we going to own cars like Tesla, which drive themselves, or are we just going to hire cars? Mm-hmm. I think there's an interesting tension there. Wow. I don't know what the answer is, Wow! but that's the going to totally economy. change. Yeah. We'll need less roads, I presume. Yeah. There'll be less accidents, if any. Right. So, that, so suddenly there's less need for insurance. There's yeah. less need for hospitals, less people crashing into each other, having horrific mm-hmm. injuries. Um, there's less need for new roads, therefore that's better for the public spending. Also better for public spending because there's less hospitals, right? Although there's other things like we're getting older, so there's, yeah, I don't know how that'll end up. But this is amazingly disruptive. Mm-hmm. Wow. Just the autonomous vehicle can be well, amazingly disruptive. And we did a podcast on, on that. On, when we did artificial intelligence, we were saying that, you know, understand like practically understand the, the software that's already out there because there's so mm-hmm. much that's already out there it might not be artificial intelligence but it's software that makes life easier so if you yeah. you are doing a menial task why don't you understand the software so that you can use it and you can show your boss hey look i found yeah. something else i understand it so i can control it so then therefore you are now getting paid to be the controller and the manager of that software rather than being the software that's being replaced right so right. just take for on? example something i've done recently setting up a company so I set up my new company, and I hadn't done that since 1999. So it's not as if you set up a company every day. So, <laughs> but how easy is it? Yeah. You know, it was like boom, boom, boom. Where, where did you and get then, your logo? Fiverr I, I or something? Just, yeah, Fiverr <laughs> done, done, logo done on Fiverr for thirty, forty yep. bucks. A guy in the UAE I never even met who'd done six thousand seven hundred logos before, and his average star rating was like four point nine 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 nine. So I went, he'll do. <laughs> Hey, it's 30 bucks, right? What's the worst that can happen? I don't like the logo. Yeah. And he also said, unlimited revisions. I go, cool. Wow. <laughs> and he pretty go. much nailed it first time. He had a couple of revisions, done, right? Logo. Beautiful. Wow. But zero Perfect software. Perfect example. How amazing is zero software? I was 
I had yes, to hire right. someone to do my MYB for me, which was good software at the time, sitting on a computer. Now anywhere I can plug in. Zero software is linked to my bank. They got the user experience so beautiful. A couple of New Zealand guys, right? I think they're XMYE big, big guys. Yeah. But I think so. Fortune made them the most innovative company in the year award last year. Zero. Wow. Cool on zero. Oh, we use it. And it just reconciles my bank every morning. Yep. I go bang, 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 click a few yep. buttons, done. Press the button, there's my PL, there's my balance sheet, awesome. there's my cash flow. How good is that? How yep. easy is that? And I think you've just got to look at these amazing customer touch points. How can we just make it sensational? All yeah. the way through every, all the parts of the customer journey. Yeah. Make it sensational. Because I, you know, I've recently joined a networking group, which is a really good one called Perth Business Network. So my mate, Duke, good got name. me onto that. And he, he signed up around about 60 companies within four months. And one of the reasons, apart from his energy and, and, co- and competency, is he uses technology really well. Mm. Like everything's automated. Like previous clubs that I've joined, I've had to fill out a, a paper-based mm. form. Like even last year, I was filling out a paper-based form, had to email it in. And it was just hard. It was just hard work. And there was even some that I was going to join, but I couldn't be bothered filling out the bloody form. Yeah, yeah. Whereas he made it so easy. You know, he's got automatic surveys that go out to tell, give you, fe- give them feedback about the event. Um, mm. But that's a perfect example. Like he just yeah. made life easy. And he's I doing think well. disruptions everywhere, and 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 people should be their most scared when they're actually most comfortable. Mm. What's going on? The unknown unknowns. Who could yeah. be disrupting me, right? When you're when you're really at your fattest, when you think making you've made most it. money, I would be at your most nervous. Yeah. Because profits are a signal to other entrepreneurs. The signal is there's money to be made here, and there will be people piling in using technology, using great customer experiences to nibble away, like we did with the real estate market back in '99, right? Mm. And and as we've seen the disruption, the way Uber nibbled away, the way. Airbnb nibbled away and what's going to happen with Amazon and what's going to happen with these other industries. So if you're in an industry, you've really got to think, what is my customer service like all the way through? And by the way, that didn't, that didn't save the local flower st- stall in the corner when Bunnings opened. Yeah. Nor it didn't. He was fantastic customer service. Prices were good. He knew yeah. my name. He even knew what pots to go where because of the sand. Bunnings don't know that. But everyone goes to Bunnings, right? Yeah. They go to the supermarket. There was a hardware guy when I first moved in Woodland Shopping Center. I used to go to the hardware guy. But since Bunnings has opened, hardly anyone goes to the hardware guy. Shut up shop. Fantastic customer service. So if you think just customer service is going to save you, I don't think it will necessarily. Still you, not good enough. But you've got to look at every point of the customer experience and make it sensational. I love it. Right? The full value chain. Yeah. Or go, or maybe there could be other things either of those businesses could have done or foreseen. I don't know. Mm. Really tough one. Yeah. So t- tell us, how do you like practically? How do you help a business with digital disruption? You go in there, you scan everything. T- take us through. Yeah. So um, I've got. Th- I'm only in week five. <laughs> Of my consulting Start up career. all over again. Hey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a consultant. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Disruption. But I've got three very varied clients and fairly big ones. And I think from my 20 years experience of being immersed in firstly being the disruptor and then trying to be at business news, we were being disrupted. So we had to sort of throw a hang grenade in our own business model and flip it around to digital and transform the business from print to digital. Um, from that experience, I can sort of have a look and talk to the owners and see what they're doing. So one of the clients of mine actually owns a uh, media organization in Cambodia. That was fascinating. To go up there, it's like going back in time and seeing a big newspaper with 185 staff that get out a daily paper every day in two different languages. But where is their readership? It's all on Facebook. The Cambodian people have skipped email and they've skipped PC wow. and they've gone straight to social and mobile. So the average Khmer is, um, has got two phones. There are 20.9 million phones with 15 million population. They've got two phones. It's quite interesting why they've got two phones because a phone company will give you a deal such that you can ring people on that phone company for free. So they'll have, a, they'll have that phone because then they're free calls, right? Then they'll have another phone because they will offer free calls on the <laughs> other connection to these other people who are on their phone company. So they have two phones. So they have phones, but no clean water. Wow. And uh, <laughs> no, no, no. So what, what's interesting is this, this company has got 5 million people on its Facebook page, which is pretty much the sum total of the Facebook audience in Cambodia. They haven't quite worked out how to monetize it. 
they get one and a half million reach through their Facebook page a week. Wow. And uh, they put up a video. They were so cool. They were the young, funky Khmer's. They were wrapping the news on a green screen. <laughs> You'd love them. They were like in their 20s. They were Amazing. wrapping the news yeah. in Khmer and getting it out. And they had 350,000 views of their videos a week on Facebook because your average Khmer is riding about on a motorbike. They're messaging on Facebook. They're getting all their news information on Facebook. They're getting all their chat, their discussion, everything is through Facebook. They're paying through Facebook, buying things through Facebook. It's incredible. It's just gone boom. It's completely missed the bit that we had, which was go to websites on a PC. They don't even know their email address. They have an email address to log into Facebook. That's it. They don't send and receive emails. Yeah. They've just gone poof, which wow. is actually what my kids are at. Yeah. My kids are like that. They don't send and receive emails either, and they don't really go on a PC either. A lot of them They've skip skipped messaging, straight there. Wow. Messaging apps are even most, you know, the native iPhone or Android app barely gets touched. It's all through WhatsApp yeah. or Messenger or Snapchat or Instagram. It's and maybe someone like me with my experience can come be literally flown in and dropped into that situation and have a look at it and then come back and I wrote a report to the owners and they've pretty much accepted everything that I've said they need to do and I'm probably going to be involved in the implementation now wow. of, the, of the new strategy. So, yeah, I, I'm working with companies to... Um, any, uh, as I like to say, I can say this because I am one, a middle-aged man in a suit. It's nearly often a middle-aged man in a suit. That's uh, all power the women, but there aren't enough of them, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Charlie, you got my back. <laughs> Plug. Um, and a lot of them aren't digital natives, and a lot of them haven't had the benefit the experience I've had. Um, but I look and maybe sound a bit like them, so I'm maybe less threatening, and I can go and talk their language, and I can maybe hold their hand, not literally, but help them with their digital transformation journey, help them react to digital disruption. But it's not all about dampening out the negatives and protecting the business. Also, where are the opportunities in digital? What are they not doing? What avenues could they go down which could actually have a massive value for them? What problems could they be solving um, using their situation they've got at the moment? So I go in and I ascertain what it is. And I suppose it's my old teacher hat as well. Yeah. Can I help educate them? Can I take them on that journey? So. That's what I'm doing at Danburst. That's great. And is there a specific, are there specific industries you focus on or really. it doesn't really matter? Not really. So a lot of the principles are pretty much the same. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think you can go and do a fancy MBA and make it all sound very difficult. But mm. what problem are you solving? Like Alika, you'd, you'd be thinking about this all the time. What problems are yeah. we solving for our clients? Mm. What value can we create for them? They might pay. If they're going to pay for that, we might be in business. And if we could keep doing that over and over, rinse, and rinse repeat in the recycle, we might have, hey, a 10-year-old business and go from there. Yeah. So I want to sit down at the C-suite and board level and just ask a few questions. But I want to help people that want to be helped and want to change. I don't want to write a report and it just ends up on a you know, yeah. gathering dust on a shelf and yeah, they do want, nothing with it. Strategy so, without execution doesn't you want mean execution. anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to execute. That's what I've been doing. And I think in the end, the skill comes in the execution, not some fancy plan. That's right. Right. Another another one of our podcasts. Mm -hmm. This is great. You just confirming. get us, Charlie. <laughs> okay, confirming cool. Confirming everything we've said. <laughs> right, that's really do you, good. Do you have any last thoughts? Anything anything else that you're passionate about that you wanna you wanna end with? No, well, good for you to doing a podcast. I'm thinking yeah. of doing one myself. I've been competing against you about digital do disruption. It. There's something I want to do. So I'm fascinated how you've all set it up. This oh, is please. very very cool. It's, it's and really I've been getting into as in listening to podcasts over the yeah. last year or two because it's great. You can you know you can listen when you're driving, when you're walking around, when you're doing the gardening, whatever. Mm. It's like dead time. Yeah. You know? yeah. I'm interested to see because you're videoing this as well. Yeah. Um, how that how that uh, works out and how that looks. So that goes on YouTube or. Everything. So I'm going to get yeah. snippets of this, put it on some on Instagram, some on Facebook, get the best mm. parts, you know, do like a three-way split on the screen uh, with all of us on there. Mm. I guess an it's, experiment. I guess yeah. it's using content in all the forms that it could possibly yeah. be used. So yeah. maximizing it and... Well, you're like the social this. media media guru, Beth. So, had, yeah. It'll be good for our LinkedIn. I know things. <laughs> yeah, you know things. Of course. Hopefully. Um, so we'll get it on LinkedIn because... LinkedIn now has native a native video platform. So before uh, LinkedIn, you'd have to just upload a YouTube, embed a YouTube video and then you've got to click on that and you've got to go to it. Yep. It's not on desktop yet, but you can add videos via mobile. So it's And that's, okay. again, it's LinkedIn's finally caught up to the fact that video is a very, very strong yeah. medium for imparting a message. Yeah. So, so we'll get it. And I'd like that. to end with a positive note. I, I think people got very gloomy post, you know, mining construction boom. I think we live in Western Australia. We're so lucky. We are. We live in paradise, right? We do. Um, when was the last time the recession? 1991. I think we're about to break the record. Yeah. I think we're going to take Great it off Holland. Then. 
for the longest period without a recession. Wow. Um, and we just live in this beautiful, pristine environment, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just amazing. Where well, I think there's still a lot of opportunity. It hasn't all been done yet. Yeah. And it doesn't matter that we're the most isolated city because you can get to anywhere these days with technology anyway. <laughs> Anyone could be listening to this anywhere. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So it's awesome. So I'm really positive about it all. I just think it's a mindset. People need to be more it, positive it, yeah. about things that can be done. The opportunities it, rather than yeah. digital disruption. Yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's and a mentality. Time. And like yeah. you said, and that's yeah. why we do this podcast to help because it's it's lo it's for local people. Like I'm not trying to promote this to overseas or whatever. Like it's for Perth people, and we're trying yeah. to get them equipped to to understand technology, to understand business, to understand marketing, so that they can do better. Right. Because you're right. It's mentality. You know, right. and it's that willingness to learn, I think. So, yeah, cool. totally agree. Thank Charlie. you very much. Charlie, thank, thank you very you, much. Charlie. It's been great. And uh hope everyone enjoyed that. Peace. <laughs> Thanks, out. Guys. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs>